Do you ever feel like you have so many things competing for your time and attention on a daily basis that you just cannot keep up with them all? Maybe you have children, maybe you have a husband, maybe you have a house that constantly needs cleaned. Whatever it is, we all have things we need to get done on a daily basis, as well as things we want to do on a daily basis, but it can be really easy to feel overwhelmed like there's too many things and we'll never get caught up. Well, if that sounds like you, then today's interview is one you'll definitely want to listen to. In it, we're talking with Morgan Tyree, author of the book, Take Back Your Time, Identify Your Priorities, Decrease Stress, and Increase Productivity. In this interview, Morgan is sharing her three color-coded system that's going to allow you to take back your time with energy and enthusiasm. So you will know the best time of day to complete the tasks that matter the most to you. So you can get done the things you need to get done and not worry about the things that you don't and not be stressed out in the process. So if this sounds like exactly the kind of thing you need in your life today, definitely stay tuned for this video and make sure you watch all the way to the end because we have a giveaway coming up really soon that you definitely will not want to miss. All right, today we are talking with Morgan Tyree, author of the book, Take Back Your Time, Identify Your Priorities, Decrease Stress, and Increase Productivity. Thank you so much, Morgan, for agreeing to talk with us today. Absolutely, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, can you start us off by just telling us a little bit about you, a little bit about your backstory that we might be interested in, and um, just set the stage for the topics that we're gonna talk about today. Absolutely. So I am currently a mom with three teenagers and we live, our family lives in Northern Colorado. And so I'm in a season of life where I um, am busy raising kids still, but I do have more flexibility and freedom in a sense because I do, I have my oldest leaving for college next week. And I work as an entrepreneur. I have my own small business. I do professional organizing for clients. And then I also teach fitness classes. It's always been kind of my hobby job. And then I also recently became an author, which you just mentioned, so there's my book. So I really love helping people and encouraging them when it comes to living a more intentional life. So that is really my heartbeat. And I'm so thrilled that that's what I get to really focus on in this season of life. That's awesome. It sounds like you are a very busy lady, but I'm very curious to know, how did you get started? Um, your book is about time management. How did you get started talking about this topic specifically? Great question. So, you know, really it's interesting. I feel like God gives you this thread of continuity in your life and you don't always understand why you're doing each specific thing in each season. But I have worked, as I mentioned, I've worked in the fitness industry for over 25 years. So I've really worked with people on their health and living more intentionally just by taking care of their, their physical bodies. And then I've always had a passion for home organization. I grew up in a home where my dad was a custom home builder. My mom was an interior design. So I've always had a love for curating a cozy space, a home that is a place that's your sanctuary. And so at the foundation of both your health and home, there is a piece of time management the more we can manage our time in a intentional way the more we can realize the benefits of having a better health you know taking better care of our bodies and we can also enjoy our homes more because they can be that place of retreat for us so it's been interesting how my different experiences have all just kind of built this layer these layers in my life as far as my experience goes so I've learned a lot personally with my own time management challenges and then in helping all my clients as well so personally, I love the topic of time management and read all the books and all the courses and all the things um, just because I too have my own business and work from home and all this kind of thing. So for me, like it's a must, like I want to know how to schedule my time really well, make sure that I have time for things that, that matter um, and that I'm not wasting my time on things that don't. But for our audience here at Equipping Godly Women, we really focus on just helping Christian women to be the best Christian women and wives and mothers that they can be. Can you talk a little bit about how the topic of time management relates to the idea of being a more effective Christian woman? I, I first, I really feel that God is a God of order and that he desires for us to live more of a peace-filled life than what I call a panic-filled life. You know, he doesn't want us to be scrambling and feel like we're in chaos 24-7. Will there be moments where life feels out of control or overloaded? Absolutely. But I don't think that that's the intent for each and every hour of our day. And so I feel like as Christian women, we have a responsibility 
to steward our time well. And I know that that's not necessarily easy, but I do feel that there are some, there's some simplicity in taking um, better control, for lack of a better word, over our time. Because I think we can easily let time sort of um, get away from us without having an intentionality. And so I feel like I want, I want my readers and my clients and the people that I get to uh, speak with to feel encouraged that they can really do what they're being called to do in their season of life and do it well, but they have to remain intentional. And it's, it's, it's almost like having a daily mindset. We can't just think it's going to happen and that our time is going to be managed for us. We do have to take uh, responsibility for it. We do need to try to capitalize on the time we're given. Cause I, you know, we, nobody knows how many days we have on this earth. And so I feel like if we, if we remain in that mindset that this is a gift and we get such an opportunity to use our time well, that we want to choose well and, and live our best life that way. Yeah, and honestly, I get so many emails from people here at Equipping Godly Women who are telling me, hey, I want to read my Bible more, but how do I find the time? Or I want to spend more time with my kids, but how do I do that? Um, we're just busy and stressed out and overwhelmed. And it's so common today that having those skills of time management is so helpful no matter what it is that you're trying to do, whether you're making more time for your faith, making time for your marriage, for your kids, like those things take time. So I noticed in your book that you talk about a three color time zone system. Can you tell me more about what that is and how that works? Yes, so it's it's really a mindset of intentionality. And I give a lot of tools in the book where you can take the colored time zones and you can implement them in different ways. So I really want the, the reader, depending on their personality type, to make it work for them. But essentially what it is, it's just a way of thinking about the blocks of your time because we all have some division in our days and in our time. And so the green time zone, so I modeled it after a traffic light, I'll back up here. So the green is your go time, it is your focus time. And that could be anything from something maybe that requires a ton of focus for a, uh, something for work that you're doing. It could even be an important phone call or it could even be a focus time where you're really playing with your children or sitting down and playing a, a game, a board game with them. It's taking a, an intentionality and a focus and putting some, um, boundaries in place so that you're actually focused and being present. And then the yellow time zone is more of that flex time, which I think as moms, we're well aware of what flexibility looks like because that's, that's our heartbeat. We have to be flexible. We have to respond. We have to pivot and shift. But I want people to understand that that time zone is just as important. It's the time zone when you can multitask if you're intentional with the two tasks you're combining or even the three. It's the time when you can take some tasks and whether it's folding laundry, you know, and talking to your child or unloading the dishwasher and doing something else. It's like you can do things that have a little more start and stop and allow you to, to shift and change a little bit more. And then the red time zone is that fill time. It's the time we apply the brakes, we slow down and we do something that's restorative. And that could be a multitude of things. It could be something as, as much as like getting a run in if you're into exercise. It could be taking time to read a magazine for 15 minutes. It's basically recharging your batteries and that's a very unique thing for each of us. But my philosophy is we all need to have some time in each of the zones. It'll look different per each person, but it's having that mindset of knowing when we should be in which zone and also which tasks to be doing in that zone. Because I think what happens in this day and age with the um, distraction overload that we have, it is hard to stay intentional. And so my thought in creating this time zone is that it allows people to just kind of with a mindset shift go, okay, I need to focus right now. That means I'm turning off these distractions or I'm communicating that I can't be interrupted. So it's just, again, going back to that word intentional, you're taking intentionality with when you're doing what. Okay, so I love the idea of the three time zones and I do use them in my own life, although I hadn't heard them called that before I saw your book. Um, but I am wondering for moms, especially moms of little ones or moms who maybe homeschool and their kids are with them all of the time, how can they set aside those three distinct time zones? Like the yellow time zone makes a lot of sense. Like you said to moms, we are used to being in this state of limbo. Um, but the red time zone and especially the green time zone are a little bit more difficult to come by. So how can moms kind of set aside that time and protect that time to make sure that they have it? Right. Well, I think there's a piece where you need to be very discerning. So if you have some tasks that need to be done in your green time, your green time zone, then there needs to be that 
proactive planning, whether that's maybe you have someone helping with your children or maybe you get outside of the home to, to focus on the task. You know, it, it's going to all depend on what that specific um, task is to be completed. Sometimes if your kids are a little bit older, it's just a communication. It's a, it's a you know, it's out, it's laying out to your children like, hey, I need to go into the office or I need to go make a phone call. I'll need you not to interrupt me for the next 30 minutes. So there's a communication piece, but also a piece of um, discerning when is the best time. And if you're a, a mom with kids in the home and you really are in yellow time zone a lot of the day, there's just probably a big acceptance piece too. So you might have to kind of um, consider how much focus time you can realistically do. And then do you capitalize on early morning hours or later in the evening? You know, you're going to have to think about maybe how to uh, plan those times a little more intentionally. And I would say it's the same with the red. If you want to fit in something for your self-care, whether it's just getting your hair done, it will probably take a different level of planning if you have to be considering the child care piece. So I think there's just a really big um, a check of being realistic about how much time for those. I mean, I think the, the thing you want to avoid is not having any time in those zones because I think the focus time is important. Even if you're not having productive work things that you need to be working on, there may be focused tasks that are important to you to finish. And so you'll want to find some time. So I know that's kind of a long answer, but it's it's there's an individual piece to all of this too, where people have to really think about, okay, how do I discern this for myself? How do I designate these times for myself? And then being very realistic. Okay, so as we go to implement these time zones, the one thing I really am curious about is how do we know how much time to allocate towards each of these zones. Obviously it is going to vary depending on the ages of our children and you know whether we are working outside the home or in the home or you know what things we have going on. But are there any guidelines where you can say okay there needs to be maybe this percentage of time for this or maybe oh if you're seeing these symptoms in your life you need more of this. How can we kind of balance or find a good balance um, the various time zones? Oh, great. Yeah, that's a great question. So I do have in the beginning of the book an exercise where you take a week and you do a time log. And so you kind of do a reactive look at where are you currently spending your time? Because I think that we can easily kind of fall into this thinking of we know where our time's going. And then we actually put pen to paper. It's similar to if you were to keep track of what you eat in a day, it can sometimes be a little eye opening because you go, oh, I didn't realize, you know, I spent this much time here or didn't spend enough time here. So I would really recommend that if someone is really not sure kind of what their balance is looking like right now. So that's just kind of one exercise. Anyone can do at any time. And it's something you can do on the front end before you start implementing maybe more, more of these time zone skills. But then you could also do it once you've implemented them and see if you've improved. So it's a great kind of checks and balances. But the other thing you can do is you can seek accountability. You can talk to your spouse or your your best friend and say, you know, do you think I'm getting enough time for my self-care? Or, you know, you can have those dialogues. I think sometimes people can see things for ourselves that we don't see. I didn't really focus on giving really uh, strict guidelines because I just feel like oh, each of us have such a different plate or a different season that we're in. And so it's not a very um, rigid uh, method. I don't want it to be rigid because I feel like we need the, the fluidity that life brings. But I would say simple things that I would say most of us should have some red time zone in our day. And that could be 30 minutes watching TV at the end of the day or taking a quick walk on your lunch break. It doesn't have to be something you know, over the top, but it's just having that Again, that intentionality of like, am I filling my cup up so that I can then overflow tomorrow when I start again? And then the green and yellow are going to be a lot more subjective as far as how you, you know, what you're, if, if you're going to work and you work an eight hour day, you might have a lot of focus time or you might have seven hours of flex time. It'll depend on what your job or the nature of it is. So yeah, I really didn't give guidelines that were that strict, but I gave it more as a of seeking a harmony so you're basically finding time for each of those zones within your week and that you're not those people that are really really achievers and doers which I can relate to a little bit we're probably really good on our green time zone and we need to work on our red time zone so that's again where accountability or someone could speak some life into you and be like you know you're really good at getting a lot of things done in your flex time and you you get all these little small things done but I'm seeing you're not getting your focus tasks done so those checks and balances from friends and also looking at your weekly schedule can be really helpful yeah that's a really good point because I find that I'm the same way like I am pretty good at making sure I have time to sit and focus on the things that need to be done and I can set that time aside and especially now as the school year is starting back up like I have that time um, but then I also need to make sure that every minute I have to myself I'm not always doing 
a task and trying to get things done, but making sure that I am setting aside that resting time as well, which is difficult for me. That's the part that I struggle with. Um, but another thing I noticed that you mentioned in your book is that you talk about identifying your most productive times of the day. This is something that I have found really helpful, but I would love to hear you talk more about it for our listeners who maybe haven't thought of how that this can help them. So, and I share in the book, when my kids were little, I was definitely more of a night owl because in that season, they pretty much went to bed at 7 p.m. You know, we had this nice little routine and that was my time of my day that I could count on for just not being interrupted. You know, I think moms can relate to that. And so that was my time where maybe one night that was just doing red time zone and just, you know, chilling out and watching a show. But then other times that would be my evening where I would catch up on bills or I might work on some photo albums. You know, I could look forward to those evening hours as productive time. It's like I sort of got a second wind and it really was a great time for me to really focus on getting things done. Or like I said, or even just restoring. But then what's interesting is that my seasons have shifted and, and that's that's what I really talk about in the book is is really starting from a place of knowing your season of life because in that season that's when I could have productivity time or real focus productivity time. When my kids got older, I started having to do these carpool um, swim drop offs in the morning and I was up at five five thirty so I have ever since then I have moved to really being more of a morning person and the idea of doing any kind of focused work in the evenings doesn't even sit well with me and I also find that all in the afternoon tend to kind of get a lull just based on kind of where where my day goes that's kind of when my, when my energy drops and so I'll use my afternoon times when the kids are coming home that's a really good yellow time zone for me because I can tidy up some things around the house and put some things away and I'm able to kind of bounce around and do small things because it's not overly focused so if we can take that um take that tool and think about when we're most productive and then really think about when the tasks would align. And if you're a mom who is a, just naturally a morning person and you're trying to work on something more focused, then maybe getting up super early in the morning, I mean super, we, we can define that, but you know, whatever that might be for you, use that morning time to really dig into that project you know, and make that a habit. So I think it's just a great way to Again, be more intentional and think about, okay, how do I maximize my time versus just trying to do things whenever I think about doing them? Yeah, I found that really helpful for me as well. Like you said, your energy dips in the afternoon. Um, mine does too, especially after I've been working all day. By the time I pick up the kids, they are adorably energetic um, is the word that I like to use to describe my children. Um, and they have so much energy and they're loud and it's by the time I've been working for hours, I don't need that in my life. Um, so I have started scheduling errands in the afternoon just because it's something very mindless that I can do. That's a good time for me to just like walk around Target or walk around the grocery store. And I don't find that stressful. I just kind of like zone out and get stuff done. Um, so I think just like you said, I love your idea of taking and doing a daily, you know, over the course of the week, a daily diary of, okay, here's what I'm doing at this time of day. Here's where my time is going. And even also here's how I'm feeling at different times of day, just to kind of match those things up a little bit. Um, but I also wanted to ask you, do you have any other random tips or things that you have found really helpful that you love to share with people when it comes to productivity or being intentional or scheduling their time well? Anything you always just wish for an opportunity to tell people? Yeah, so this is what comes to mind that I do share often. I actually just was uh, doing a follow-up session with a client yesterday and addressing this very tool. So here's what it is. It's called the Daily Five, and I've used it with my kids, and I talk about it in the book. And basically, it, I listed out the five things I wanted them to make sure they did every day. And this was at an age where they could read. If they were younger, you could do pictures. But, you know, five things like make your bed, open your shutters, put your dishes in the dishwasher, just kind of those five basic things that I want them to do. And this, this is a tool that I think any person can use. So if you're, if you're wanting more harmony in your day to day and you feel like you're kind of scrambling, getting through each day, if you implement something like this, again, it's simple. And I was going to give my example. So my daily five, what I typically do, and I'm going to use my morning just because that is kind of like I mentioned when I kind of start my productivity and I'm, I start out kind of strong in the mornings. I do five things every morning, give or take. I check communication because I found that between managing my kids' schedules and all the things, I need to make sure I haven't missed, you know, if soccer practice got moved or a permission slip is due, et cetera. So I do a quick commu communication check, but I also am mindful that I don't just get on and start doing a bunch of work or responding to a bunch of things unnecessarily. It's more of a check. 
And then I uh, take some time and have coffee and do a quiet time, do some reading. I really need that little bit of red time zone, kind of just, it just kind of helps me move into my day. And then I always unload my dishwasher in the morning and do a quick tidy of the kitchen. It can take five, 10 minutes and it just gets that day going really well. And I run the dishwasher every night, which with our family of five, that works. But a, a, a routine and a schedule is huge. And then I run my Roomba. We have a Roomba for our home, which is like, the best thing ever. So I just, as soon as the kids head out, that thing is on and it just feels good. And then I typically, my fifth thing I do is I do a little daily check-in with like making sure I know who has to be picked up when, you know, I kind of just know what, what the different things, cause I feel like every day has different things always. And then I also really check through like what's for dinner. I get the meat pulled out of the freezer, just kind of, you know, get that, that little bit of that ball rolling for the evening time. So just doing those five things for me every morning it keeps a harmony in my home. It gets me knowing that, okay, dinner's got a plan and everyone's, you know, I know where people have to be. And so I would suggest to people that if you're finding that you're not staying on top of some certain things, what are five simple things? And they should be things you can keep on, keep on your hand count, you know, one, two, three, four, five. What are five things you could do daily? And they are not big things, but they're small things that will keep that momentum going and keep your time moving forward for you. Yeah, I've started to try to do this myself as well because I'm the kind of person who wants to just do all the habits and all the changes. Like, let's just go overhaul everything and do the best of everything. Um, and it never works that way. You have to start small with like, okay, what are your five simple things? Um, I don't, I'm trying to think while you were talking, like, what are my five things that I do every day? And I didn't get to five. Right, but you probably do some inherently already. And that's just the, and if things are already a habit, like I, I didn't put on there that I take my pets and feed them. I mean, there's some things you just do because you would never forget to do them, but it's more thinking about what are some things you could implement that could really make your day flow that much better. Yeah, so far I have started just over the last week or so, you know, now that we're into a new school year, I want to get things started off on the right foot and I want to make sure like now's the time to make sure we're implementing routines and teaching the kids, you know, how to do things. Um, So I've been trying to, I have like a journal that I write in every morning. I read my Bible every morning. I drink a glass of water because I'm trying to drink more water every day. Um, What else? Like eat a healthy breakfast, like just little things like that where I'm trying to make sure, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You know, look over my to-do list so I know and I have it already made. I usually make mine at night before I go to bed just so I can go to sleep because it's all out of my head and it's on the list and it's ready to go in the morning. Um, But yeah, having those habits in the morning and in the evening as well is just so helpful for a little bit more peace in your life, Um, a little bit like you said, a little bit of sense of control over your day that it's not out of control, but you know what you're doing and you can be a little more intentional. Um, but I wanted to ask you as well, what about for the mom who feels like she is just so overwhelmed and so overloaded that she doesn't even know where to start? Like sure, she would love to set aside these blocks of time, but she has kids who are constantly needing things at all hours of the day. Um, so many tasks, she's so behind, where would she start? So what I would pro, uh, what I would suggest is to ask questions of yourself if you're in that situation where you just feel like you're not even sure where to start, which is very common. I think when we get overwhelmed and overloaded in our lives, it can feel like, how can I even, you know, how can I even get out of this? And what I would suggest is starting with asking the question, are you being very discerning with what you're saying yes and no to? Because we all can be gatekeepers for what we commit to, but we have to be intentional. So I would just really look at your calendar and your schedule and saying, what have I, where have I used discernment? Where do I need more discernment? And then I think also as moms and as, as, as someone who has a really busy plate, full plate, to think about, are there things you can be delegating? Are there some things that you're taking on? Because often as women or moms, we can tend to just take it all on or you know we just grab things because we want to get it done but but asking yourself are there things that i can actually be delegating to or can i even maybe change some of my standards because i do think in some seasons of life um your standards are going to shift and they're going to be different and so it's okay to say you know what we're going to kind of relax on this for a while or we're going to let this go and just be realistic about what's what you're capable of and then the last thing is I don't want this time zone method to feel like another thing to do. And so 
if someone just takes the the mindset of thinking, how do I designate better when I'm doing what I need to do? For example, if um, a woman is in charge or a mom is in charge of paying the bills, is there a better time to designate doing that task than when the kids are all running around you? You know, just as an example, you know, is there another pocket of time? Could you get away on a Saturday morning, go to Starbucks and actually make it a little bit of like a, a little bit of a not that it'd ever be a fun task, but, you know, ha give you a little um, care, a little motivation in it. So those are the questions I would ask. If you're feeling like I give this example of you don't want a busy life, you want a full life. If your life feels busy and you just are dead tired at the end of the day, where can you use more discernment? How can you delegate more? And where can you designate better when you're doing what you're doing? That's great advice. And I'm even thinking in my own life, like I need to do a much better job of delegating to my children um, and having them do the tasks that I know that they are capable of doing. I have just been doing for them because it's so much easier. Like when I go in there in the morning to wake them up, I usually just pull their clothes out and set them out for them. And there's really no reason in the world that I need to do that. I just have been because it's faster. If I do it while I'm in there, it takes me two seconds and it's, you know, 10 minutes saved off of our morning routine for them to get around to getting themselves dressed. Um, but I think one thing that I've been wanting to do is to like make a checklist. And two of my kids are old enough to read and the little one, she's still home, so it's fine. She has all day to do her tasks. Um, but to make a checklist for them and say, okay, here are the things you need to be responsible for. I don't need to be responsible for all of your things. You need to be responsible for your things. And I'm gonna be responsible for my things and kind of to get some things off of my plate that way. And I'm just sharing that to see if, you know, if that's helpful for any of our listeners as we are heading into back to school season and there's so much going on with the paperwork and the schedules and all the things, you know, let the kids things be the kids things. They need to learn responsibility and let your things be your things, if that's helpful for anybody. Um, is there anything else that you, any other pieces of advice that you wanted to make sure that you shared before we start wrapping things up today? I'll leave, or I have a couple of things. I would, I want to encourage women to give themselves more grace than guilt. If you feel like this hasn't been a strength in your life, that this is an area you want to improve in, give yourself grace. We all have different things coming at us. So I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, I could never figure this out or this is overwhelming. I just want women to give themselves grace and realize that tomorrow is always a new day. We attended a parenting class when our kids were very young and the, one of the teachers said, just remember, no matter how hard a day is or how long a day is, there's always tomorrow. And that's always stuck with me because um, parenting is hard. I mean, there is just no way around that. And there are some days where I am just worn out. And I just remember that. And so if you have a day, I, I talk in the book about a day number one where things just click along and you're cruising and then day number two, like nothing's going your way. You're always going to have those different days, no matter how well you plan. And so give yourself grace let go of the guilt. Remember that tomorrow is always a new day. So I just want to really encourage women that you are being called to do what you're being called to do. Focus on you and just do your best that you can. And God's going to equip you and he's going to guide you. So that's really my heartbeat. And I just hope that women will live in that grace, but also really focus on being intentional. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Before we go, I definitely want to know for any of our listeners who have loved this talk, who think I need to get more intentional with my life, things are kind of crazy right now and I just need a little bit of order and to manage my time a little bit better, where can they find more from you, including I heard that you have something to do with seasonal challenges and I definitely want to know more about that. Yes. Okay. So my website is morganizewithme.com. And that is kind of the one-stop shop. You can find, uh, I do have the organizing challenges. They're seasonal. They are free and you can join and do them at your leisure. If you want an email reminder, that's also provided. So they're designed for 10 minute tasks over the course of 10 days each season. And they follow my philosophy of just that daily effort. And so that's really one of my principles is when it comes to organizing your home and life, you, you have to have an intentionality each day and just doing small amounts does really add up. And so they can join that. I do have a podcast as well. That there are short episodes that they can listen to while they're doing the organizing. And then I have a newsletter that goes out monthly and all of my social media is more organized with me. So there's lots of ways to keep up with me. And my hope is just to inspire 
each and every one that follows me to live more intentionally. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. It has been wonderful just to share a little bit of these tips and tricks on time management and to hear all of the wisdom that you have from writing this book. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, so that just about does it for today's episode. If you loved listening in and found this episode really helpful, definitely make sure that you check out the show notes for this episode because we have a few things going on that you will not want to miss. Not only am I going to be sharing more of where you can find Morgan and her book online if you want to check that out further, which you should, um, but Morgan has also agreed to donate her book as part of a huge giveaway we have going on on the Equipping Godly Women blog starting on Monday. Now, I have not announced this anywhere online yet, so nobody knows about it. You're the first to know, but starting Monday, we are doing a huge giveaway in honor of Equipping Godly Women's fifth birthday and in honor of the first ever free online conference that we are hosting next month in September 2019. So if you are not already on the Equipping Godly Women email list, you absolutely need to be. So go ahead, go down to the show notes and check out all the links I have for you. I'm going to show you where you can get involved with the giveaway, how you can get signed up for that, how you can get signed up for the free online conference, and of course, where you can find out more from Morgan. So go ahead, check those out, and I will talk to you real soon. All right, bye.